Hey guys, welcome to another video. It's our second to last day of this month long painting a day challenge. And I knew that I wanted to paint a flower today and I had originally sketched out some thumbnails of different ideas with multiple flowers and different types of flowers and like a bouquet of flowers and different arrangements and watercolor effects and all kinds of fancy exciting stuff, which I do want to do in the future, but remembering what I said yesterday about feeling burned out, I wanted to do something that I knew I would actually accomplish and also that wouldn't take me so long that I would quickly get burned out. So I decided to keep it much simpler for today's painting and I also decided to paint probably my favorite flower which are poppies. I really love poppies. They're, they're just amazing and I love their lanky kind of like bendy stems and they're beautiful giant flowers that just seem too big for the long stems and they're lovely and they come in so many different colors and I really enjoy them. So I wanted to, um, like I said, keep it simple today and paint just one open flower with a couple buds and maybe one flower that was past its prime and it was a really kind of nerve-wracking experience at first like these first few later layers i started out very tentatively i was just super nervous about putting colors in and i was so worried about putting things in the wrong spots and not being able to get the values in properly but the longer I worked on it and the more I did and the more decisions I made about the colors I wanted to use, the better it got and the more comfortable I became, which was fortunate. I'm also testing out, I think I used them maybe in the last video or two as well, some new calligraphy brushes that I got. And um, I will hopefully be reviewing these for you guys relatively soon. I um, have seen a few artists use Chinese calligraphy brushes for watercolor painting and I have my Kuretake Mensko, Menso Zig cartoonist brush and extra fine, whatever crazy long, whatever that brush has a really weird name. Anyway, I have that brush and I've had it for a long time and I use it, it's the one I'm using right now, I use it almost exclusively sometimes. It's like the main one that I use and I really wanted to get more brushes like it, similar designs um, and made of, you know, the animal fibers and something similar to those that function similarly that would feel the same when using them. So it took me a while to find more authentic calligraphy brushes because it's hard to find things that aren't just silly knockoffs on like Tick Blick or Amazon, things like that. You can get cheap ones, but they're not real. You know, they're not, they're not legit authentic, I guess is the right word. And I wasn't necessarily looking to spend $200 on each brush or anything like that. I just wanted to find something a bit more authentic and eventually I think that I did. So once I have tested these brushes out a bit more, I wanna to talk to you about them. I got, I think I got a total of like seven brushes or so, so I'm using them intermittently and using different ones. I used two of my new ones for this piece and again, you can see, ended up with my <laughs> go-to brush the most. It's still definitely my favorite brush and the best one that I have probably, but I'll be talking to you guys about those other brushes soon. I've really been enjoying mixing colors together on paper as opposed to in the palette. so allowing the colors to be in their natural state when I first place them down and letting them blend together on paper has been really enjoyable for me. I feel like it creates more dynamic images and things that aren't so flat and when you have multiple colors interacting together on the paper but they're not completely mixed, I really enjoy that effect. and. I am very happy that I've been able to find a few things that I really like over the course of this challenge and I've been able to kind of pinpoint a few things that I go, hey, I really like that. And I'm really happy that I'm allowed this to be a bit more sporadic in 
not just drawing the things that I already know that I like, because I also singled out things that I just want to make, take an effort to incorporate more into my pieces, like flowers today, and buildings like we did yesterday, and animals, and all of those kinds of things I want to include more in my pieces, and there's no way I'm going to be able to do that if I don't take the time to actually study them and work on them and create them in the first place. So it, it seemed almost impossible for me at first to have a painting that didn't have a person in it because I enjoy drawing and painting people so much, but I knew this was important and important study time and important times to try something different and I'm really glad that I've done that so far. I'm pretty sure I know what I'm going to be painting for you guys tomorrow, but it's not set in stone yet, so if you have any recommendations for our very last day of our challenge, let me know. I would really like to hear from you guys, and thank you to those of you who have commented so far. Alright, that's it for today. It was a nice, simple, shorter painting, and I really enjoyed it, and I will see you guys tomorrow for our last daily video. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.